welcome to our very first Baycat Lunch and Learn of this cohort. Today we have a special guest. It is director producer Paul White's coming on in to chat with us. And from here, Paul, the format of this is entirely up to you, uh, but we leave it in your hands now. Take it away. Okay, cool. Um, uh, thanks everybody for, for being here and thanks for inviting me. Uh, that's cool, it's your first one. Um, Hopefully I'll lower the bar for everyone after this. Um, uh, so uh, I've been, I started out as a playwright and, um, and then I started writing uh, with my brother. And the first thing that we wrote was an animated film called Ants, um, which was, uh, I didn't realize at the time, but um, it was actually a really good lesson in a shot selection because with animated films, uh, it's all storyboarded and the storyboards are edited. So uh, by the nature of it, I was exposed to, to storyboarding. Um, and then uh, I just, uh, so I've, I've continued to write and, and my company produces as well. Um, uh, most recently um, we did, uh, this was no thanks to me, it was my brother and other people at the company, um, uh, The Farewell, uh, I guess it was last year, two years ago. Um, and, uh, um, single man Tom Ford's film um, and then they also did the most recent Pinocchio uh, with uh, Tom Hanks which is coming up from Disney um, and then as a director uh, I just directed my 13th film um, I feel very lucky to have gotten to do that um, uh, the first film I did was American Pie the first one um, and then more recently, I just did something with um, Lily Tomlin and, uh, and Jane Fonda. I did a film with Lily Tomlin called Grandma a while ago, which was um, my first attempt at a very, very low budget film. The budget for that was $600,000, um, which to me was you know, a low budget film. Um, and then more recently, I wrote something for Lily and Jane. Um, and uh, I mean, in terms of, um, of things that I focus on, uh, I try to focus on, like, I hope the film is going to be good, um, but I don't always have as much control over that as I like. I mean, I definitely work really hard and, um, uh, and I work with people who I, I, I try to, as a director, um, be really respectful to people and um, create an environment where they can do their best work. Um, I, I'm really interested in all aspects of filmmaking, particularly acting, but um, but I try not to micromanage. Um, and uh, so I care about the film, but, but actually have more control in a way over um, just the experience of making the film. In other words, like whether people are coming into a decent work environment. Um, and I, uh, that's something that I've uh, <laughs> focused on from like really early on um, uh, because, um, I, you know, you get this, product or whatever the film and um and then people are going to react to it in whatever way they do like i've had films that um had did well and i've had films that failed uh, quote unquote um in terms of either box office or, or critical reception um but uh if i can at least sort of like take the, the time spent making the film and have that be some sort of artifact that i feel good about then um, that is something that i can control um and I, the, I actually really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and, and I appreciate when I get these opportunities because it um, reminds me <laughs> of what I feel like I should be focusing on. Um, and one thing that I wanna focus on is um, uh, how I react to uh, setbacks or um, things that don't go the way that I want them to. Um, Cause that's another big variable that you can actually control to some degree. Um, if you are able to um, take judgment off of uh, whether somebody likes something of yours, be it a script or some work, um, or if it's something that gets released, um, you know, how people react to it. If you can take your judgment away from that, which is really hard, um, and put it on whether you try it or not, that's something that you can kind of like, um, carry with you through life and 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 through through filmmaking um or making tv or whatever um uh and so 
I, I don't know if you guys, I, I've done different kinds of things. I did a TV show called Mozart in the Jungle, which was starring Guy Garcia Bernal. And um, that was set in the classical music world, which was really exciting for me because I got to be, I didn't, I wasn't a big classical music aficionado. Um, I'd known a classical musician growing up um, who was a friend of the family, who was in the New York Philharmonic. Um, and she had told me all sorts of fun stories about, about being in the Philharmonic, but, um, but it was really education for me. And it was really fun to be around um, people who are spending their lives in uh, in music and being part, part parts of orchestras mostly, um, and uh, so that was really fun. Um, uh, and um, after that, very brief, <laughs> uh, and then I also did films like um, about a boy in a good company, um, and most recently, uh, I guess, released most recently, Fatherhood uh, with Kevin Hart, which was on Netflix. Um, uh, which was actually, interestingly, a film that before I was involved in it was written for, it was it's based on a true story. Um, this guy from um, Minnesota named Matt Logan, who I became friends with. Um, and it was originally written for um, Channing Tatum um, and uh, Channing wasn't able to do it. And so they, they thought of Kevin Hart and I had met Kevin before and that got me really excited about doing it. So I rewrote it um, for and with the involvement of Kevin. Um, and that, that was a good experience on a personal level because um, it was adapting somebody's memoirs, Matt Loveland's real story of um, when he had his first kid, tragically his wife died the day after giving birth to their kid and he unexpectedly ended up being a single dad and, and, uh, and bringing up his kid. And um, it was sort of about how he, um, how he got through that and what, what he took from that. Um, and, having him on the set and having his daughter um who's now 11 on the set was really great and uh and working with kevin on something that was meaningful to him and having him take it and make it personal and then working with all the other actors was really fun um one one really fun thing about directing i'm sorry if i'm rambling a bit we'll, we'll go to the question and answer soon so it can actually be stuff that applicable to what you're interested in um but um one really interesting thing about directing in terms of working with actors is that you have so many different types of actors. Like some actors will come um, extremely prepared, like almost over-prepared with like tons of notes in their scripts. And they might've picked out music that they wanna be listening to for a particular scene on their earphones before getting to the, you know, before starting. Um, they might have personal things that they know they wanna use and touch base with before starting a scene. And then you'll have some actors, and they, I worked with Alfred Woodard on that film. And my impression was that that was the kind of actor that she was. She was listening to music, and she was um, getting really deep into stuff. And then Kevin, um, I think, is surprisingly, I say surprisingly because I think a lot of comedians, um, they have a hard time with this important aspect of acting, which is listening to other people. Because comedians, the nature of what they do is they're working on their material, and they're refining it over and over and over. And yes, they're listening to an audience but they're not interacting with somebody. And a lot of good acting seems to me to be just being in the scene with the other person and being able to respond to what's actually happening. Um, but Kevin was like totally loose. Like he'd be like, like um, uh, I don't know, uh, like playing a game on his phone or something right before a scene. And, and then he'd put it down and like be able to burst into tears if that was necessary. Um, so he was kind of the, the opposite um, in a way. He, he was just important for him to feel loose. And then there was a little girl in it, Melody Heard, um, and she'd be like dancing around and stuff, like sometimes even like <laughs> after calling action. And then Alfred would be like, Melody, I'm trying to do this scene where I have to be really upset right now. Could you hold off on dancing for a moment? Um, so that aspect of taking a bunch of different types of people with different um, processes and, and trying to have them be in the same scene is a really fun aspect of directing. And that's where I think sort of the psychological aspect um, is, uh, comes into play. Um, and I would say that like from the first time I got to direct, I was quite lucky because I was, I was, um, I wasn't, <laughs> I certainly was not like a prodigy or anything. Like it had taken me quite a while to get the opportunity to direct. Um, and I was definitely a, at that point in my life, um, uh, I was very comfortable saying when I didn't know how to do something um, as opposed to fronting. And that really helped me um, because I hired people in that case.
to um, who knew more than I did and who had that experience. And, uh, and almost everybody, <laughs> like 99% of people, I think, are like, prone to want to help you and want to do a, a good job if you're not, you know, if, if you're just respectful and um, if you're okay with saying, I don't know how to do this thing, will you please like <laughs> give, me, give me some advice here. Or, um, and at the same time, um, if you're able to kind of articulate, if you've done a little thinking ahead of time and can articulate what you want the thing to be like, that's really great. It doesn't have to be like um, the specifics of, of, of of what that cinematographer or editor or production designer, cinematographer being the person uh, in charge of the lighting and, um, and often in charge of, you know, along with the director and the camera operator in charge of the shots. Um, and then uh, production designer being the person in charge of everything that you're seeing um, through the camera. Um, and then the editor being the person in charge of post. Um, uh, is the, the aspect of filmmaking, one aspect of filmmaking that I really love is sort of like forming these temporary communities. And um, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's a really lovely thing. And then you all, you know, you meet and then you work together. Hopefully it's a good experience. I actually think there's no reason for it not to be a good experience. People get really stressed out, um, partly because they're worried about how something's gonna do or how it's gonna affect their career, or how people are gonna receive it. But if you can like not think about that stuff, <laughs> Uh, it can be so fun um, just being with a group of people and all having a, a goal of working outside together. And then it's kind of interesting because then you, you say goodbye <laughs> and, um, and you might work with those people again. I mean, I do work with the same people frequently, um, but it's kind of a nice life lesson too, that you can have these relationships that are kind of meaningful um, and then, uh, and then have everybody disperse <laughs> and it doesn't take the meaning away. Um, uh, yeah, so um, those are those are some of the things that I think about um, uh, trying to run my myself up, um, and uh, let me. I'll turn it over to if anybody has any questions. That's okay. Awesome. So thank you so far, uh, Paul. And yes, filmmakers, please. Any questions that you may have, feel free to unmute and ask it, or you can drop it in the chat. Yeah, I have a question. Um, how was it like juggling from going to be like a director and then going from being an actor and then a screenwriter? Because I know for me, like I kind of want to learn all aspects, but did you learn as you go or you kind of, yeah, I just want to learn more, I guess, like the process. Oh, thanks. Um, I think that's great to learn all aspects. Um, first mm -hmm. off, because it's fun. Um, and second off, I mean, I haven't acted much. When, when somebody asks, well, I've acted a little bit. Like if somebody asks me, there's some filmmaker. I did a film called Chuck and Buck um, that my brother was in as well, um, which is quite a while ago, but it was one of the first sort of um, digital films that got a real release. It's like, um, and uh, it was a super low budget movie. So the director, Miguel Arteta, who I'd known, asked my brother and I to be in it because it was supposed to be two characters who kind of look like, 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 look like each other. Um, and uh, I like it when when people when I get to act because it reminds me of how um, how hard a particular thing about acting is, which is um, uh, you're kind of like standing around or waiting around to do your thing, <laughs> and then um, and then eventually you know you get up there and you're only going to have like <laughs> just a handful of minutes to actually do the thing that you've been waiting around all day to do. Um, so as a director, it reminds me that I want to create an atmosphere for the actors where, um, uh, where they feel comfortable and where when they are getting to do it, I want to try to create the illusion that they have like limitless time. Like I don't want them worrying about, oh crap, I can see that it's the end of the day. And you know, a lot, I think a lot about people who are day players, meaning like who come in to do just one day on a film. Um, and they're really important for the film. Like you need those people to be really good, but they don't have a chance like the actors who have larger parts to get into a role over the course of days. Um, and oftentimes they're kind of like um, ignored a tiny bit. Um, but uh, 
but just to kind of like give them attention and, and um, even like the background players, the extras, um, to try to give them attention. Although I also learned early on that um, as a director, I can't uh, directly give a note to a background player because um, that, uh, I think it like changes their union contract um, and, and then it gets really expensive. Um, so I have to do it through the assistant director, which is great. An assistant director is a, I think an insufficient title for that job, you know, which is the person who's doing the, doing the scheduling and um, working with the background and helping you as much as possible. Um, it's kind of like the field general or something. Um, uh, but they're the, they're the people, they're the um, learner men who are supposed to be um, working with the background players. Um, but <laughs> like I've had an experience as an actor where um, it was like, two or 3 a.m. or something. I've been waiting around for a long time to do uh, uh, this little scene. And um, and the director wanted a shot of my shoes, of my boots, <laughs> like standing there. And he this was like, oh, we're going to get the shot of your boots first. <laughs> and so, and he really wanted it to be perfect. And like, I was, I was just standing there <laughs> and I was like falling asleep. And um, I, I made a note to myself. I was like, definitely don't do the shots of like the inanimate objects first, <laughs> like to, to do the actors first while they have energy. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is um, trying to make sure that, uh, I mean, it's always, a, I think a hard thing, like whether you talk to the actor about what you're doing with the camera. Um, I think with really experienced actors, I, I always will ask, I'll say, do you mind if I talk about what I'm gonna do here? Or do you, you know, is that okay? Or is that gonna distract you? Most of them are interested in no, particularly because um, when they have energy, I think like if it's a, like, a, like a dramatic scene or an emotional scene, like that actor is only gonna be able to do it a handful of times. Like maybe sometimes like two or three times, like if they're supposed to cry or something. Um, so if I'm working with a really experienced actor, I'll tell them I'm doing this shot first, but the point where I really think that this is gonna play emotionally is, in, in two setups from now um, where I'm going to be, you know, tight on you or whatever, usually. Um, so I'm just telling you, this is a, <laughs> this is a wider shot or something. It's, um, uh, and usually they're, they're happy to know that because I do think that like most really great actors um, have gotten to work with luckily a lot of really, really experienced ones. Um, like they can do it. <laughs> um, uh, but they can't necessarily replicate it without forcing it. Um, and just a little side note, I work with um, uh, Academy Award winning actors who will use um, glycerin for tears sometimes. Like that's okay. <laughs> like, you can fake it with tears. <laughs> People don't want to, <laughs> they, they feel like it's cheating, but, um, but sometimes it's okay. Um, and then um, uh, for me, like, I want, like, I really enjoy it and I want to be as relaxed as possible on set. So um, what I'll do usually is, um, and please stop me or, or interject if, if there's, um, you know, if I'm not being helpful with these answers. Um, but one thing I'll definitely do is after writing the script, I usually write them um, and you, you number them um, through final draft or whatever. Um, and then I'll do a separate, uh, uh, a little booklet uh, with a shot list. Um, I tend to do shot lists more than storyboards um, uh, because um, uh, especially with like an actor driven piece, like I'm gonna wanna have like a general sense of where I want, what I want happening with the camera, but if the actor wants to do something else in the scene, I don't wanna be kind of frozen. Um, but in order to think ahead with the cinematographer, like usually I'll sit down with the cinematographer and go through the script and be like, okay, scene one, what shots do we want here? And, and so I'll do, uh, usually it's like 20 or 30 pages or something. I'll, I'll do a document that is the shots that I think I'm gonna want for every scene and then little notes to, to myself and, and that I'll then share with everybody, the costume designer, et cetera. Like um, the more you can communicate, usually the better it's gonna be because like for instance, say the production designer has done a room with um, and the walls are painted emerald green. <laughs> And then 
uh, we all knew that, but nobody communicated that to the costume designer and the costume designer, the actor shows up and they're in a dress that's emerald green. <laughs> well, they're going to like blend into the wall. <laughs> um, and um, so it's really nice to, to try to have everybody have communicate as much as possible. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I, is there any more specific I can get with, with your question or, or anybody else's question? No, that was good. Um, actually, do you guys have any other questions? Sorry, I didn't want to ask another question. Uh, uh, I have a follow-up question, actually. Um, I was wondering, like, because you said that you're mainly interested, like, in all filmmaking aspect, particularly um, acting. So how do oh, you- Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, oh, oh, I'm interested in directing acting. Sorry, in, in, in directing actors, yes. Oh, okay. But you yourself are also an actor, right? Um, I've acted a tiny bit. I would definitely not say, okay, I've, I've gotten to act a bit, <laughs> but it's oh, yeah. more, yeah, that I'm more a writer director. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your clarification. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, and I just meant I like working with the actors because it's fun. You know, it's like, um, I mean, writing is a little like playing with dolls or toys when you're a kid, you know? Um, and then, uh, Acting is, is it's really fun to be just close to it, <laughs> like when, when it's happening on a, on, a, on a high level. Wait, are we, I'm not, we're not quite hearing you, Christian. Can you actually, um, who are you sitting next to? Jose, can you actually unmute so that way uh, Christian can speak through your mic? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, as someone who has um, written plays and written films, when you're entering into that space about to um, write a film that you know that you're directing, are you approaching it from like a place of uh, seeing the film before you're, or as you're writing it versus like a play when you know so you're gonna hand it off to some of the, somebody else? Um, sometimes I'm seeing it. I mean, sometimes um, I'm hearing it. I feel like, um, I mean, everybody has their own skill set that they bring to things and the way that their brains work. Um, and I've just noticed that for me, like uh, I have a pretty good memory for um, how people speak, like how things sound. Um, but I have a terrible memory for like um, spatial things and navigation. Like I have almost like, like if I'm like, going to a doctor's office and then I'm in there for a little and then I leave uh, like more than 50% of the time I'll go the wrong way <laughs> like I like I, I am completely spaced out um uh so I mean I, I would say that for me um a lot of it is a, is a weird combination of um of, of having thought things through like having some sort of outline like I usually like I do like to outline things um and I know that doesn't work for everybody, but, but usually what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll, I'll take notes, like I'll just be thinking of something and then I'll take notes either on my phone or I'll have a little notebook or something. Um, and I'll also keep like, keep something next to my bed so that if I have a thought like in the middle of the night, I'll write it down um, so that I'm not stressing about, oh, what was that thing I thought about last night? So I'll take a whole bunch of notes and then I'll be, I'll try to get a feeling of if it's worth doing the thing. Um, and then I'll start doing an outline. Sometimes I'll use index cards, um, uh, like have like a sequence on each index card. Um, and then sometimes I'll just do it on the computer. Um, and, uh, um, and then when I'm actually writing the thing, um, I definitely want to leave room for the characters to take over. Like, uh, you know, sometimes you want a character to do something and then they're just not doing it. <laughs> and um, uh, there's a big temptation to just force, force it to happen. But you can kind of feel that in a film, I think. Um, and sometimes I do that, you know, I don't, I don't always um, uh, achieve what I'm trying to do. Um, but uh, it's a weird balance between like um, controlling things and, and, and giving over control. Um, and then the other thing is I generally will want the actor, like if, 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 if a line's not working for an actor, like I'm generally up for changing it because, you know, you don't necessarily know who's going to be in something. Like I might be writing something for somebody, but they don't want to do it. Um, 
and uh, a line that might work for a particular actor might not work for another actor. So I really want to kind of try to be loose. Um, uh, and again, to like, to have fun with it. Um, uh, did that, was that applicable to what you were asking? Cool. I, I keep talking about having fun with it because, because um, I mean, it really should be fun. And, um, and I think there's so many like points in the process where like the critical voice comes into it, especially with writing. There's so many points where you're, you know, for three days, you'll be like, this is the best thing <laughs> I've ever written. This is, you know, this is going to be so great. And then like, you know, if you look at it on the fourth day and be like, it's terrible. Like, what was I thinking? Like, it's awful. <laughs> and um, I think it's really important to try to push off that, like, this is awful part until you have a real, until you have like, um, like as much of a full thing as possible. So you don't just stop yourself in your tracks and just tell yourself, okay, I can fix stuff later. Um, because I think that like, um, like perfectionism, like I think unless you're like a handful of people of whom I am not one, um, like perfectionism is almost always like really um, a problem. Um, like you can keep trying to make things better, but understand that there are all these processes uh, um, and you know, down to the editing process. Um, so I just think you have to be really, like I personally have to be really careful of, of that critical voice and have it be the friend of the piece as opposed to like the enemy of it getting, ever getting made. And also I can guarantee you <laughs> that if you do something that is like, you complete something and eventually you're like, oh, that wasn't my best work, like that's okay. <laughs> like, like that oftentimes is part of the process to, to getting really good. Uh, any other questions or thoughts? Yeah. Um, so like when you direct something, um, do you, are most of the things you direct um, stuff that you've written or is it like other people asking you to join a project? How does that like process start? Um, it's usually stuff that I've written. Um, sometimes it's been adaptations of books and then sometimes it's been something that somebody sent me and I then rewrote. Um, uh, I prefer directing stuff that I've written because then I don't feel bad if I'm changing something or if like an actor is like, this isn't working for me or if I'm like, I noticed this is not working for you. Like, do you want to try something else? I'm guilty if there's a writer who's, you know, spent a lot of time writing that line or something and now it's going to be changed. Um, uh, having said that, I've done a little bit of, of directing other people's stuff. Um, and, uh, that's it, actually a skill I'd like to work on more is um, how to collaborate with with writers. And I know so much television is is that, you know, there's a writer's room and um, you really have to know how to how to not hog it. Um, and uh, I feel like I need to get better at that. Thank you. Who else? Any other questions? Also, like in terms of writing, like I do try to write, like keeping in mind that an actor has to want to do it, um, like to give them cool stuff to do. Um, that's the one thing I do think about. Even if I'm not thinking about a particular actor, I'll be like, okay, I really want somebody really good for this. And I just, you know, sometimes I'll write a scene and I'll go back and read it. I'll be like, oh, like this major character who's I'm hoping is going to be played by a major actor is standing around saying nothing for three pages while other people talk. I'm like, that's probably not going to be very appealing <laughs> to, to this person I'm going to send the script to. Yeah, uh, another question. You talked earlier about um, working with Alfre Woodard and, and Kevin Hart on this set and kind of like their own acting processes. Is there a way that you create an environment for these actors for like interplay as a director? Because I noticed like, all these different personalities and these different ways of acting, how do you bring it all together under like one direction or facilitate yeah. that action? Um, I think the first thing is to meet with all of them ahead of time. Um, it's really great to meet with the actor and, you know, once they've read the scripts and 
talk with them, try to get a little sense of, um, of how they approach things, like what they're, how, how they present what their life is. Um, and like, cause if you know, okay, they're playing somebody who is in this situation and from talking to them, they brought up themselves that they were in some similar situation or like that, um, that it, it, I, I actually, I think like the primary thing is trust. Like you're actually basically just trying to build trust. Um, and one way to do that, I think the primary way to do that is to be respectful and to be open. Um, and uh, respectful in terms of uh, literally like polite <laughs> um, uh, as you're meeting the actor and as you're, um, so the first thing is to meet with the actors um, and you'll see stuff that you might wanna use, you know, like um, you'll see how they behave. Um, and, uh, and then um, on the set, like when they walk on the set, like I don't want stress. Like I have a lot of stress as a director. I happen to not mind that <laughs> because like, like stress in life, I find really hard to figure out how to function with, but, but like the pressure on a set of like, we have X amount of time, it's, it's you know, there's a budget and a limitless time we're losing the light, this and that, like that actually calms me down in some weird way because I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do what I can here. And like, I know the role. The role basically as a director is part, if you boil it down, it'd be like to make decisions in the amount of time that you have, it is not to make every decision the correct decision. <laughs> like, I think if you try to do that, you're gonna be cooked. <laughs> like, cause like when I was starting out, I would do like 20 takes of a scene at the beginning of the day. And it'd be like, at the end of the day, it'd be like, oh, how come I have no time? <laughs> like I can do like one take and I'm cutting these shots. And it's because at the beginning of the day, I actually always tell myself like, don't fall in love with the first shot. Like um, you got to keep the whole, <laughs> the, the whole day in mind. Um, but like, I want to personally, I want to appear to be calm and, um, and to be having a good time. Um, and I want, when the actor walks on the set, um, I want the set to be like calm for it to be functioning people aren't yelling um if there's people always have disagreements and stuff creative disagreements but like either handle it in a quiet manner or take it off the set um and like i mean it's a very like specific instance like sometimes you'll be doing a scene and the sound person who's listening to the sound listening to through the, so there's this sound mixer who's um mixing the sound in real time and then there's a boom operator or two who are um, uh, holding the boom mics for the actors. And actors will be doing a scene, maybe it's a dramatic scene or something, or it's seen and they do a really great take. And then like uh, a sound mixer might be like, oh, there was a truck over that take. There's no good, <laughs> right? Like um, I'm, I, I wanna hear that. And of course I'm listening to the cans myself so I can tell there was a truck. But like, I'll, I'm happy for the sound mixer to tell me that, but I don't necessarily want the actor to hear that because I don't want them to be like, oh God, that, that was a great take. I'm not going to be able to do it well, that well again. I'd rather go up and be like, hey, can we do one, can we do one more time and try this maybe? Um, and uh, so like, it's a little control freaky, but, um, but it's one of the only places in life where you can like being a control freak can be a, like a little bit of a good thing. Um, and I'm not a control freak in terms of like having the actors do, except for rare occasions, like having an actor do a line exactly as I've written it or something. Like I don't, I'm not really into that. Um, uh, and yeah, so the thing is to create an atmosphere of trust um, so that the actor can look. Sometimes it's the actor who's bringing the stress once in a while, um, but it's like most of them, the stress is just about them wanting to do a good job. Like once in a long, long while you get somebody who's just like kind of mean or something. Um, but um, but even with that, it's just like, <laughs> sometimes there's nothing you can do about that um, uh, except try to, you know, still try to keep a respectful atmosphere on set and then try to find out ahead of time and don't work with that person <laughs> unless you absolutely have to. But most actors are, you know, they're intense, but um, 
but it's because they want to do a good job. Like they really want to not be faking it. Oh, I have a follow up on that. I know for a lot of uh, sets I've been on, I've seen like, you know, let's get a safety of this shot. Um, what, what's your opinion on safeties? And if we do take a safety, are you telling the actor this is a safety or are you still giving them slightly different directions so that they change it up? Um, usually I would try to give a different direction. Um, I'm not, I think it depends on the vibe and, and um, it's probably up to the particular director and also the particular actor. Because sometimes some actors will be like, I've done it. You don't want to have the actor lose faith in you, you know? <laughs> I mean, I know that I can't see everything the actor is doing until I'm in the edit room. Like I can, I think I can tell, but, um, uh, and sometimes I will say, okay, that was great. Like I'm, I'm super happy with that. I'll say, would you like to do one more? You know, oftentimes the actor will want to do one more. And sometimes when you take the pressure off and, and so that they feel like, okay, I've already got one that the director thinks is really good. So now I'll just do, Sometimes I'll say, okay, now throw everything out the window, like all the notes I told you, like the heck with them. Um, would you like to try another? Um, sometimes just taking that pressure off will lead to something cool. Um, I feel like there's always like, like a little bit of a, thing, you know, like a, a thread in a carpet that if you start to pull it, the whole thing is gonna become unraveled. And that's my fear with the like, let's do a safety <laughs> because like, I'm worried that like, I'm like, let's do a safety. And then I'm like, let's do a safety for the safety. <laughs> you know, like they can kind of keep going. Um, and uh, it's a little, <laughs> I feel like my impression of like surfing, like you're trying to stay on top of the wave and um, not staying at too, stay on it too long. <laughs> like you're trying to move on to the next thing. Um, so oftentimes you can see, also you're marshalling the energy of the actor over the course of the day. Um, so if you're kind of blowing them out, then it's going to be tough later in the day. Um, uh, I feel like the more kind of confident I got, the less I, the less I did extra takes and stuff. Um, but also, you know, you can't fake it too. Like you got, you know, if you didn't get what you want, you kind of got to be like, let's try something else. And this might not be the right approach, but oftentimes I'll say to an actor, here's my thought, if this is useful, great. If not, don't do it, do something else. Um, and I'll early on <laughs> express to the actor, um, if you do the opposite of what I say <laughs> and it brings life to it, that's cool. Like sometimes I think in rejecting a note, an actor can do something cool. Um, and then different actors, look, it also depends like how much you know the actor and how much like they trust you. Like sometimes actors generally want to get notes. And if you're giving notes to another, a lot of notes to another actor, sometimes they'd be like, hey, you got anything for me? Um, and sometimes just for fun, like depending on the actor, well, one, one, actually, one thing you actually, that can be helpful for a director, which is very kind of, seems like a rudimentary thing, but like oftentimes you're shooting out of order. So sometimes you're like, okay, just prior to this, you know, your character had this and that happened. So we're in this. Like sometimes that's really good to keep in mind that the actor might literally be momentarily forgetting, momentarily forgetting what just happened to their character because they shot it five days ago or they're not going to shoot it for 10 days. Um, so keeping track of where the character's at in the plot is important. Um, and then sometimes like I want it to be fun for me, you know, and like sometimes I'll be like, there's a scene in fatherhood where Kevin goes into the office for the first time after his wife has passed away. And he goes to his desk and there's like tons of flowers on the desk and he has kind of like a God reaction to it. And in that case, I said to him, so he did a couple and I was like, so this smelling these flowers reminds you of like smelling the flowers at the funeral. Like it, it like takes you back there, you know, cause smell is like a real um, intimate <laughs> sense. And he's like, oh, cool. <laughs> so, you know, that did something. It can be something like that where it's just like, something about a sense or something, um, or it can be something more logical. <laughs> and also, I mean, I, I wanna prevent myself from giving too many notes like after a take, cause it's like one or two, like that's a lot for an actor to keep in mind. But if you're like, also when your character was five years old, like their dog was run over. Also, um, you just had a burrito also, you talk to your mom earlier and she's like freaking out. <laughs> like, I just like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, like I'm now completely in my head.
Um, so I remind myself that I can make an actor worse too. I do have like a follow up question on like on that when you work with actors, like for you personally, like an actor were to ask you, hey, can this character be uh, a certain ethnicity or a certain gender or sexuality? What's your response to that? My response is yes. Um, and this is also why I like my own stuff. Um, look, I suppose there are certain characters that are very specific, but I actually think um, like what I really want is for the actor's creativity to be brought into play. And that's what's gonna get the best performance. Um, and oftentimes that's making it personal to them. Um, I mean, like specific instance, it was really, it was a small part, but like um, I was working on a, on a kid's film with somebody and um, the woman who I cast called me up and said, um, well, here's a deal. I'm like uh, five months pregnant. <laughs> And, and the character is not meant to be pregnant. And I was like, okay, well, let's make her pregnant. <laughs> like, um, you know, why not? Um, and uh, I mean, you'll know like whether a specific character is needs specific details or not, or whether you can change that character or role of what's, you know, I think almost always though, it's like, yeah, like, cool. Let's have that person have, have this, uh, this specific thing that the actor is bringing to it. And also, so, okay, so like in the case of fatherhood, um, the person whose memoir it is is white. Um, he's a white guy from Minnesota. And um, uh, so it was actually like the guy whose memoir was thought it was great that it was Kevin doing it and that it was gonna be um, a black father and daughter. Um, he thought it sort of um, made it, focused it more on the sort of universality of the movie. And, and also <laughs> he was like, well, you know, it's going to take it an additional step away from everybody thinking that I'm talking about them. <laughs> like, you know, my, if my friend's an idiot in the movie or like my uncle is this or that, like, you know. Um, so that was a case of, of casting something um, differently from how it was initially written. Um, and I think it, for me, it made the movie worthwhile to me. And then uh, one more question involving um, I, I noticed in a lot of your films, it's either going to be between comedy or drama. And especially like a fatherhood, you have Kevin Hart, who's a comedian, you know, in this really dramatic world. Are you thinking about tone when you're casting or, or directing? It might be more of a question for like the editing room. But, but um, when, you're, when you're making the films, are you thinking like, what is the balance? Or is it something you find later on? I am thinking about it. Um... And definitely in the editing room, you can affect that a lot. You can sort of pull the reins in on one thing and let the reins out on another thing. Um, but what you kind of can't do is like, I mean, I feel like there's kind of movies that are based in some way on reality and real life and how you feel about real life. And then there are movies that are based on other movies. Um, and it's kind of hard to separate the two um, because like we're so used to seeing, you know, one and a half hour, two hour long stories. Um, so the audience kind of is coming to it with all this stuff, like, um, but like, I do think about, and it's, look, I feel like comedy drama is like, sometimes I've done it correctly. Sometimes I haven't. Um, and in a weird way, I feel like people get really angry if, you, if they're not happy with a comedy drama. Like if there's just like kind of a flat out comedy is either funny or not. And if it was a drama, you're either feeling emotional or not. When it was a comedy or drama, I actually feel like that's the thing that's most like life. You know, it's just like, there's inappropriate laughter in various tragic circumstances. And um, in funny circumstances too, or like lovely circumstances, you're always aware that this is great, but like something else is gonna happen soon, which might not be so great. Um, I feel like because it's so close to life, um, is really hard because you're doing a totally artificial thing of like faking it. Um, and then also, yeah, like people get annoyed. <laughs> and I think having some people who, whose opinion you trust is really good to like show the film to. Um, and then, I mean, casting is a really big thing because um, I want to have faith in people, you know, and you definitely kind of like fall in love with that actor while you're doing the thing with them. 
So sometimes you can kid yourself. Um, look, I, <laughs> it's really funny. After Father, I thought, I mean, like Kevin, like, <laughs> I, I thought he did a great job in both that and in the upside, which is a dramatic role he played. Um, uh, like, he was, he's so, like, um, gave me great stuff to work with. Um, and I knew that, like, like I had a brother-in-law. My wife got really upset at him because he was like, ah, and he was all pissed off that it wasn't a straight up comedy and he just wanted to see Kevin in comedies and he was really rude about it if I had been there I just would have laughed about it my wife got really upset um but like um I think that like you have to bring the role to the actor to some degree sometimes like um it's something I'm learning honestly like tone um it's, it's in a way the hardest thing. It's like a weird, you know, it's a weird, like, cause it's like, it's so part of every decision. Um, and I think, look, I could be, again, like I could be wrong. Like I, I, I think that, but just for me, like sometimes I'll have a cut of something and I'll show it to my brother and he'd be like, you know, I think this joke here while really funny is like making the whole rest of the movie seem fake. So I would cut it. Um, and I tend to listen to that kind of thing, um, you know, but it's, it's hard. And also like, because yeah, it's, uh, you, you obviously, uh, you, you put your finger on saying that <laughs> and I'm grappling with it. Not overstaying your welcome is probably a good thing, like within any particular tone, you know, like if you're doing a comedy drama and like you're in a patch where it's like, it's hardcore drama for like 10 minutes or something, probably in a little bit of trouble. Um, Cause then you feel like you're just in a different movie. Amazing everyone. We have time for one last question. Does anyone like to ask? I have a, a question. So like, how do you know when a script is ready for shooting? Like. What, what sort of criteria do you have or do you just feel it or, or how does that how does that process work um i mean on rare occasion like i'll really feel like and oftentimes it's been with fairly short scripts like when i'm doing a very low budget film i want the script to be short because i don't want to take time shooting something that i'm not going to use if it's a bigger budget film like if it's a studio movie then i'll be like oh this might work or might not i'm up for finding out um with the shorter films, sometimes it's just like, oftentimes it's something that I've been thinking about for like, I'll think about something and take notes for like, well, like a couple of years or something. And then when I sit down to write it, it's really fast. Um, uh, and so occasionally it'd be like, oh yeah, this like 95 page script, like I really feel like this is ready to go. I know the actors, I'm gonna send it to them. Um, but the first thing is like sending it to the actors and them wanting to do it or not. And, and you being like, I mean, I always try to be open to say, okay, what isn't working for you in this script? What should I work on? What, what makes sense? What doesn't make sense? To kind of bring them into the process. Um, and, uh, but I think you can, look, I've made a mistake in the past. Like I was writing something with like Steve Carell in mind, which was about like a father with a son who's um, dealing with um, addiction. And I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And like, I was like, oh, I'm ready to I want to send this to Steve Carell. I said, and then like, I like read, oh, Steve Carell is doing a movie where he's playing a father of a son who's dealing with addiction, like based on a book called Beautiful Boy. And I was like, well, <laughs> that's done. Um, and I certainly questioned like, what if I had sent this to him like a year ago when I'd already been working on it for a year? I think like one's perfectionism can, can get in your way. But also, I mean, I think that the real thing is like the actors are your allies, hopefully eventually. So like when the role is good enough, you know, when you think, oh, there's enough in here that if I was an actor, I'd want to do this scene. I'd want to do this you know, cool thing. Um, uh, and if you sent it to a few people, I mean, if you have people that you trust and trust not to be negative, but also not to like, you know, completely BS you, <laughs> because nobody knows is the thing like you don't really know whether the script's ready to go um uh and you're going to be rewriting it anyway um but i also do think that like okay someone's only going to read this for the first time once you know the actor's only going to read this once 
is hard. It's a real judgment call, you know, but also you got to put your stuff out there. You know, you can't be like, also you got to have a, all I would just say is that like, it's like boxing or something. It's like part of being a good boxer is being able to take a punch. Like part of being a filmmaker or anything creative in life is you got to be able to take a punch and like, not just like, Oh, that was nothing, you know, <laughs> but, um, but keep moving. If you can use it for fuel, great. You know, if you can use a rejection for fuel. That's great. Um, but the main thing is like, you have to get in there and put your stuff out or else, you know, nothing will happen. And you might not experience the pain of rejection, but you also won't experience the fun of making something. Amen. Beautiful, everyone. Give a round of applause for Paul. Oh. But, um, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the, the, the questions and I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. And I hope you have a really good time making films and uh, doing whatever you want. Thank you so much, Paul. We appreciate your time and your wonderful thank wisdom. <laughs> thanks. I'll try to remind myself of that stuff. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. All right, thanks. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Thanks. <laughs>